On this episode, we talk about The Handmaid's Tale, why anyone would ever care about your writing, and what six-year-old Todd thought about Christopher Columbus. Hey everybody, and welcome to Finish Friday, the show where we help more creative people change more lives. I'm your host, Todd B. from Tennessee, and I was looking over here to my second camera. What's up? Second camera people, I'm not used to having it there yet. I wanna talk real quick about The Handmaid's Tale, which is obviously going crazy right now with the second season reboot. And, and I was reading through the article about it and the, one of the writers, Bruce Miller, he talked about how much of a challenge it was to sit down and write the second season for the show. Now, I'm sure he's not talking about how hard the actual events are to watch because literally that show makes me cringe so much. I almost I almost can't watch it, but it's good so, so you can't look away either. It's one of those things. But Bruce Miller is talking about the challenge of writing a second season after having an enormous hit. And what he says in this article is, it's hard to sit down and write whenever you have a big fat Emmy staring at you from right beside your keyboard. And I love this because he talks about what it takes for a creator to have success and then move on to the next thing. And the thing that comes to mind for me here is if you wanna be an artist who continually does great work, you have to do three words, die every day. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday. Like every night I go to sleep, I lay down, I fall asleep, I'm dead. And then I wake up the next morning, brand new day. Why? Because every chance I have to prove to myself that I can still write. Every chance I have to step out into the world and ask myself what I want to say today. If you're an accountant or an engineer or, or someone at a call center or someone who has a job where you can go in and kind of do the same repetitive tasks, that's one thing. But if you desire to be a creative, even if you're in one of those professions, if you desire to rise above and, and do work that no one else is doing in a creative sense it's die every day it doesn't matter what you did yesterday it doesn't matter what you're going to do tomorrow all that matters is this 24 and Bruce Miller the guy who writes for a critically acclaimed show that's getting the attention of millions now yeah I'm gonna take advice from that guy so this week don't forget it doesn't matter what you've done before all that matters is what you're doing right now and what you're going to do next defines the rest of your life at least until tomorrow. I was talking with Ryan before the show. Does anybody, you guys, I'm gonna slip in, actually, I'm gonna slip in the ask the audience a little bit earlier. Comment down below if you know who this person is. You see, never forget, that's a clue. I'll give you another clue, it's like a Netflix thing. Comment down below if you know who this is. This week's question of the week comes from KJ. And KJ asks, I constantly battle with the question, why would anyone care what I'm writing? KJ, actually, it's funny. I was reading about someone who was struggling with this exact issue the other day, and it's everyone. Everyone who has ever written anything. And so I think, you know, if you're struggling with this issue of why does anyone care or why should anyone care what I'm writing, I think the first thing you have to realize is that people might not. And to me, that's the beauty of writing in this new age. We have so many different areas of interest that there's going to be a large amount of people that never hear about what you do. Like I think about Malcolm Gladwell, who most people have heard of, but few people have actually read all of his books and even fewer actually uh, agree with all of his ideas, right? So it's not a question of why should anyone care what I'm writing? It's a question of what can I write that I care about? I think whenever you get to the point where you're a writer and, and you're studying the things that are most interesting to you and you are completely isolated and diving into those topics that you care about the most, I think that's when other people start to care about that. In one of my favorite movies, which is La La Land, there's a quote where Emma Stone says something along the lines of, when you're passionate about something, other people get passionate about it. 
So that's what I would do first is make sure you are passionate enough about your writing to put in the time that it takes to get it done, to put in the research that it takes to make it good, to put in the editing that it takes to move it from good to great because that's the process for all writers. It, it, it's never amazing when it comes off of the pen. So I would say that's the first step is build that passion in yourself. And then if people care, great. And if they don't, also great because at least at the end of the day you put in the work to make your writing and your art the best that it can possibly be this week's artist spotlight goes on little todd and i was recently like i've unpacked some of the stuff my parents left me uh since we moved into our own house and i found this little gym by uh i guess a six or seven year old todd bryson and i want to share this epic with you now <clears throat> columbus sailed to america on october 12 1892 which first of all no he was trying to go to india he named the people in america Thank you, Lil Todd, for giving us that. <laughs> and in all seriousness, because I don't want to make this completely self-serving, like whenever I look back at these things, it's a reminder, right, that I've always been a writer. Like I, I was chatting with Ryan earlier today and, and one of the things we said was, I asked him how long he'd been in the video. He was like, I think pretty much always. And, and that's how it is for artists sometimes, right? Because you don't necessarily choose what you're drawn to. You just follow your heart and you follow your passion. And as obnoxious and cheesy as that sounds, I really believe that is true. And, and if I have any thoughts or, or anything to close here with, it's like, look at what you were like when you were a kid and ask yourself when you stopped being a kid. That does it for episode 65. Thank you guys so much for watching. I already had the question of the day. Who is this mysterious person on the mug? That's pretty much it. Don't forget to thumbs up this show if you liked it. Once more, I am Todd B. from Tennessee, and I will talk with you next week.